So our next topic which we are going to discuss is uh, called the Hoffa syndrome or the Hoffa pair syndrome or the Hoffa pair impingement syndrome. So it is an acute or chronic inflammation of the infrapatellar fat pad and it is a common source of anterior knee pain also known as the Hoffa's disease fat pad syndrome or Hoffitis. It was firstly reported by Albert Hoffa in 1904 so that is why it is called as Hoffa syndrome. Coming to the anatomy or the biomechanics, it is found in the anterior knee compartment as a mass of adipose tissue that lies intracapsular but extra synovial that is extra articular but intracapsular. So boundaries are if you see superiorly by the inferior pole of the patella and the alar folds inferiorly by the anterior tibia, intrameniscal ligament, meniscal horns and the infrapatellar bursa which we have discussed that is the housemaid's knee when this bursa gets irritated the infrapatellar bursa mm -hmm. and you have the anteriorly by the patellar tendon, patellar ligament and the joint capsule posteriorly by the femoral condyles, intracondyl and notch and the synovial membrane. So here you can see the schematic representation in the diagram uh, where it is uh, located. The then the infrapatellar fat pad biomechanics. If you want to see, is the it is mainly innervated by the posterior tibial nerve. So the infrapatellar uh, fat can be a source of localized and severe knee pain, and this attributes to the presence of a type of uh, 6A nerve endings, which could be activated through mechanical deformation or chemical pain mediators. Now we all know this the noxious substance that is substance P nerve fibers are also present in individuals with anterior knee pain, particularly when the infrapatellar fat pad is inflamed. As a potential source of inflammation and pain, many authors consider this fat pad to be a key structure in the patella tendinopathy or osteoarthritis. This structure, this infrapatellar pad pad is a dynamic structure. It alters position, pressure and volume throughout the range of motion in the knee. When the knee moves into flexion, the <coughs> superlateral portion of the fat pad becomes relaxed, freely expansive and moves posteriorly. So sorry for the interruption. So what I was discussing is the biomechanics if you want to see it is innervated by the posterior tibial nerve and it can be a source of uh, localized and severe knee pain and it attributes to the presence of uh, type 6 a nerve endings which could be activated through mechanical uh, deformations or chemical pain mediators and the substance P nerve fibers are also present in individuals with anterior knee pain particularly when the infrapatellar fat pad is inflamed. It is a dynamic structure as I was saying that it, control, it alters the position, pressure and volume throughout the knee RM. So when the knee moves into flexion, this the superolateral portion of the fat pad becomes relaxed. 
freely expansive and moves posteriorly. In extension, this fat pad lies between the lateral patella facet and the quadriceps tendon. Therefore, most common absorbed symptoms are associated with ex extension. However, it could also be seen in flexion where pain is provoked by the trapped uh, pat pad between the patella tendon and the anterior femur. So, mostly it is seen in the knee extension when it lies between the lateral patella and the quadriceps tendon. It, the role is that it facilitates gliding between the femoral condyles and the joint capsule. The knee mechanics can be altered when there is adhesion in the fat pad that changes the position of the patella and the patellar tendon because this fat pad role is to reduce the friction and to uh, enhance the smooth movements of the knee joint. So when this fat pad uh, is uh, uh, changes or when the position or the characteristic of this fat pad changes, the knee mechanics also get altered. It changes the position of the patella and the patella tendon also. Consecutively, the result will be the effectiveness of the extensor mechanism. The extensor mechanism of the knee, which we have discussed in class previously, that will be compromised. Decreasing the effective movement arm, placed greater demands, placing greater demands on the cordyceps to produce the same knee extension force. So, a shorter patella tendon length affects patella mobility and creates resistance to lateral transition at the <coughs> full extension. In a study, it showed that reduced coordination between medial and lateral vastus uh, muscle motor units in anterior knee pain is involved. Another report study reported a significantly later eviction, activation and a reduced amplitude of contraction of cordyceps during stair stepping following infecting the injecting the fat pad with a painful hypotonic saline. So the inhibited fat pad results in increased patella femoral loading and reduced cordyceps activation. So this is important. So when the fat pad is infected or it is not functioning as normal, it results in the increased patella femoral loading and the reduced cordyceps activation. Now, if you see the metabolic influence of the fat pad, there are also studies that reported fat pad to be a lubricant structure that facilitated the flow of sanival fluid inside the joint. So it has become clear that the fat pad yields more sophisticated functions due to its complex neurovascularity. The fat pad is considered to be a producer of many inflammatory mediating substances and found in association with osteoarthritis. As an adipose tissue by nature, the infrapatellar fat pad mainly secretes fatty acids which are well known for their pro-inflammatory effects. So the adipose tissue also stores immune cells, another potential source of inflammatory mediator substances. So in addition, a study also showed that this uh, IFP or the fat pad actively secretes the IL-6 and it is soluble receptor uh, SIL6R are relatively higher levels compared to other adipose tissues. So the, it has multifactorial contributions. It also lubricates function. It has a lubricating function. It has a frictionless function. It is having uh, inflammatory mediating substance. So this fat pad, uh, because of its uh, characteristics, there is lot of contributing factors for the anterior knee pain. Also, it is found to release mesenchymal stem cells, which, uh, which enhanced controlling activity. But there are in, uh, investigations going on for further confirmations. Regulation of uh, glycosamine glycase release, that is the GAG released, a source of reparative cells, release of the pro-inflammatory cytokines associated with an elevated BMI and collagen release are also reported to be the functions of this fat pad. So you can see this fat pad has a number of functions related to the uh, overall uh, structural continuity or the uh, overall management of the uh, knee joint and the structures. It has multiple roles. So the pathophysiology or the clinical picture about development, 
it is uh, idiopathic but the anatomical location of this fat pad exposes it to mechanical load especially during extension as we have discussed so overuse or repeated micro trauma from sports or falls will lead to hypertrophy if the fat pad fails to recover it can become chronically inflamed and if it is not properly managed may result in fibrosis and ossification Predominantly, it is seen in young women, jumping sports activities, ligamentous laxity are also considered to be risk factors of, for, for Hoffa's disease. The, coming to the physical examination and diagnosis, the fat pad is often enlarged, form in consistency and easy to palpate. And the Hoffa's test can be performed to avoid the pain provocation in the adjacent structures and the incure fall results. A study was done by Kumar et al. who suggested the modification of the HOFAS test. So in this modification of test, it involves taking the knee into passive to forward hyperextension, forced hyperextension by lifting the heel and keeping anterior pressure on the tibia. This position stimulates pain exclusively in the fat pad if it is inflamed. So this modified HOFAS test is a good uh, confirmatory test. Gliding the patella in four directions medially, laterally, superiorly, inferiorly is also important to detect adhesion or movement restriction during the knee movement, particularly in hyperextension. So pain in hyperextension is a strong indicator of the presence of the inflammation. Examination should also aim to exclude any other radiating pathologies from the hip or the spine. Differential diagnosis uh, it could be primary disorder or secondary to other pathologies such as meniscus injuries or ligamentous tear. Prevalence is not widely investigated, however. Two studies reported that this isolated fat pad in 1% of anterior knee pain cases and 6.8% as a secondary disorder. Synovitis and swelling of the fat pad were reported after ACL rupture. Detailed history and findings of the functional assessment very important to discriminate the fat pad syndrome from other conditions such as the patellar lateral femoral friction syndrome, impingement of the infrapatellar uh, plica or the cyclops syndrome uh, which we have discussed in previous uh, conditions and classes and the symptoms of fat pad are anterior knee pain typically often retropatellar and infrapatellar. Patellar femoral crepitus might be present with the knee loading uh, such as in stairs, squatting, jumping and running. Effusion and decreased ROM are often seen with the inflammation. Pain and discomforts from long walks, flat shoes, prolonged standing refer to a fat pad syndrome. Pain resulting from up or down heel walking characteristic feature of the patellar femoral pain syndrome. Now in imaging, MRI is the best imaging technique. Edema of the superior and posterior fat pad inflamed inframatella versa are easily detected by the magnetic resonance. However, it is recommended to refer the patient to MRI only to exclude any other pathologies, particularly when there is a history of trauma. Dynamic sonographic assessment revealed the superolateral fat pad impingement associated with uh, perceived tight iliotibial band is also one of the condition. Coming to management. Patients are often prescribed with the conservative treatment and physio and uh, if the symptoms persist, other approaches are introduced. Diagnostic and therapeutic injections of local anesthetics and steroids into the fat pad resulted in immediate pain relief and reconstruction of movement. Arthroscopy resection have resulted in improvements and average improvement in the VAS score was reported following ultrasound guided alcohol ablation by House and Connell. Management of the acute condition which might result from false direct knee trauma or after knee surgeries is uh, ice massage that is cryotherapy, flat footwear to avoid uh, minimize the loading. We advise the patient to avoid provocative activities till the acute symptoms resolve and if it is a chronic fat pad syndrome then biomechanical abnormalities such as hyperextension should be addressed to decrease the loading to correct the hyperextension a relatively elevated so is advised movement awareness and education awareness are important in this stage implementing 
knee strengthening exercises, quadriceps and anterior hip stretching is found to improve the IFP restriction symptoms. There is a magnificant impact of high BMI and obesity on knee OA and fat pet syndrome. An 18 month randomized control trial investigated the effect of a weight loss program on exercise and on diet on the fat pet and the study reported significant reduction of this fat pet volume as a result of weight loss and changes in the body fat percentage mostly achieved by combining exercise and diet so we see that exercise and bmi and obesity has a role to play in this fat pet syndrome so students this is about the hofa or the fat pet impingement syndrome i hope we have already discussed this in this class and this video will also enable you to understand a little better any doubts uh, please uh, feel free to discuss in our forum thank you for watching this video